Welcome to another episode of Centre Pass Extra, the show that takes you behind the scenes of the ANZ Championship. On this week's show, we preview the major contenders in all of the individual awards of the competition. But first, let's reflect back on the top five performers from the semi-final action. Preliminary finals action this weekend. It's make or break for our two competing teams. And speaking of performance, Catherine Harvey-Williams has joined me once again on the desk to discuss our contenders for our two major individual awards in the ANZ Championship, the Best New Talent Award and, of course, the Most Valuable Player. Harbs, will start with the Best New Talent Award. It was won by Julian Anopu of The Magic last year. She now, of course, plays for the Canterbury Tactics. And the Most Valuable Player Award was a joint award going to Temapara George and Laura Langman. And let's make it clear, it's not a New Zealand award. It's not. <laughs> can be included in this. Exactly right. So we'll start off with the Best New Talent Award and how that voting process takes place. Basically it's open to any player that has played five or less games in the previous season. So some experienced players still certainly very much capable of taking out this award and based on a 3-2-1 voting system in our MVP award. So some big names up for this award. Let's start up with the big three contenders obviously and a lot of people are going to say this could be a one horse race with uh, Janelle Fowler of course in her rookie season yes. of the competition up for the award but also Kimberly Revillian from the Queensland Firebirds has had a great rookie season and Bailey Mears sat on the bench mm -hmm. for a couple of seasons there for the Magic. She's a silver fern we know but has been outstanding with the Mystics this year. Yep, who would have thought Mears would be under consideration because that Catherine Large who had such a good season la last year but it's all about making the most of your opportunities. Mears, particularly toward the end of the season showed exactly what she can do because the benefit of Mears, Dan, is she's tall and she plays that strong shooting game but she does a lot of movement beforehand which is not um, akin to the likes of Fowler etc so she has that element of her game and the speed and elevation she's got puts her in a good position to be a star of the future. Um, Revillian, certainly a star of the future as far as Australian netball is concerned. Just quite a level head for a young girl and just knows the spaces defensively. I think she's pretty strong. You know, she's still got a, a little way to go, but she's certainly showing that she's got great potential and that's why she's been part of this Firebirds lineup all season. So she's certainly under consideration. And, and how about um, Janelle Fowler, Do so We need to talk about her because we seem to talk about her every week, but what was her average in the end? 50 something. 50 goals a game, yeah, um, outstanding. And as a result, still threw everything at her to keep her there. They've succeeded. She's there for another two years. She's repaid them, giving some faith to her to bring her into this competition but if she continues to get better she's just going to be of absolute freakish nature if she's not already so it's a three horse race but really just a one horse race I think Dan. Yeah she smashed all the goal shooting records both in individual games and also across the season Janelle Fowler it's been an outstanding breakthrough season for her rookie year in the competition. Some other names to mention of course a lot of young talent coming through the ranks in the shooting department Sophia Fenwick from the Canterbury Tactics, Melissa Talent from the New South Wales Swifts has been impressive in her court time and Jess Waitapu starting in that goal attack position early for the magic before Hal Penny stepped it up. Yeah, I think what these players have shown is they've got great potential. They haven't had the consistency of the experienced players, but that will come. But that we are mentioning them for a reason, and that's because when they do play very well, they're quite exceptional and they catch your eye. You know, I saw Talent play one game and you thought that she'd been playing, you know, for five or six years. She was so settled and experienced and backed herself, as did Fenwick at times. She shot really well and Waitapu started off well but fell away a little bit and Hal Penny came good, so as a result lost her spot. But certainly some great depth there in that shooting circle. Also in the midcourt as well, Gabby Simpson, the young Firebirds wing defence, very exciting athlete there who's really taken ownership of that wing defence position now and will play in the final series. And Lee Waddington, a 28-year-old who in her first rookie year as a, a full-time member of the Thunderbirds, has stepped into the shoes of Nat Bomberto when she's been injured and done a commendable job for her efforts out there too. Yeah, and you have to say Pedersen has been pretty good in a team that struggled all year and she's the midcourter for the Mystics. But Simpson, very good against the Thunderbirds for most part last week. I hate to mention the fact that she made some errors under pressure, but that will come as she grows. And Waddington, you know, she's a classic example of don't always look at age, you know, look at someone who can add to your team in various areas and she's a perfect player to sit on the bench and come on as an impact player, so certainly worth a mention. Very similar to Alyssa McLeod when she was in her debut season with the Firebirds as a 28 year old and won a premiership in 2011, so certainly a point to be made for that, that experience campaigner as the rookie. Defensively, a lot of Canterbury Tactics players in here that have mm -hmm. done a good job, Watson, Walker, Hurley and also Samantha Pullman from the Thunderbirds having a good outing against uh, Janelle Fowler 
Fowler where not many players have had success against Fowler. No, and relish that opportunity. So, yes, yeah, certainly going to be a player of the future as well, but it's about getting opportunities and making sure she makes the right decisions as to who she plays with along the way. But Watson and Walker have impressed me for the tactics again in a team that struggled, but, you know, they've held up at various times. They just need someone to learn from. They're so young, they need someone with some experience um, to show them the way, to give them the understanding as to the nuances of the game and, and areas that they can improve on. But a, a pretty solid effort in a team that really struggled this year. So that is the best new talent nominees. Let's now turn our attention now to the most valuable player award, of course, one of the most prestigious individual honours that can be bestowed on a player in the ANZ Championship. Last year it was the tie between Langman and Temupara George. Probably big four contenders in this one, Harves. There's quite a few names that we want to have a look at today, but four outstanding front runners. Janelle Fowler, of course, from the Southern Steel. She could be the best new talent. She could be the MVP. Has that been won by one player before? Both players? I times? don't I think so. It has not. So Fowler's been simply outstanding. Worth a mention too, definitely Madison Brown for the Vixens and Laura Langman from the Magic. Both very key players there for their respective teams. And Jeeva Mentor, perhaps the best goalkeeper in the world at the moment. Yeah, look, I break that down again into two lots of two. Uh, Brown and Fowler for me, the two outstanding players. You week in week out they have both performed at a very very high level and Madison Brown has led the way for her team and will do so in the final series and foul not talking anymore about it. <laughs> uh, mentor has been great um, you know when she played for the Thunderbirds and was in just you know, I guess career best form they went all the way and if the Vixens go all the way this year it's, Mentor is going to play a big part in that and Langman is always you know one of the most consistent players in the competition even when the Magic was struggling early she was a standout player for them and now they've all come good she's just maintained her high level so she certainly deserves her spot in that top four. Some other players worth mentioning let's start with the front line of course Romelda Aiken from the Queensland Firebirds rock solid as always Carla Borrego's had a pretty good year with the Thunderbirds a couple of MVP awards for her Erin Bell Donna Wilkins, two goal attacks that have been outstanding as well. Yeah, look, Aiken and Borrego and you know, the likes of Fowler now, they just are of the ilk where they set such a high benchmark that they'll always be discussed when it comes to the MVP and that's a credit to those players because they've come from a foreign environment to really settle into the culture of Australia or New Zealand. Bell, she's been really consistent. She has to be mentioned. Some people would probably question um, selecting her at this level, but if you look at the performance of the Thunderbirds over the course of the season, you know, she's contributed most weeks and at a very high level and shot from a long range so she couldn't do much more really so I think she deserves a mention and Wilkins has been the standout for the Pulse. Uh, defensively we know she's very strong because of her basketball background but just her competitive nature and what she has done for the Pulse to take them into fifth position and uh, historically their best performance in the ANZ competition. So people are unsure as to what she'll do next year but for the Pulse to take a step into the finals um, she needs to, to be maintained and I think they'll do everything possible to keep her even though she's getting on and has three young kids at home. She's just a, quite a phenomena. Yeah, fingers crossed Donna Wilkins returns next year. She's still got plenty more to offer the game at the highest level. Speaking of the Central Pulse, Liana Leota, another outstanding performer in the midcourt. Potentially she's won the MVP award previously so perhaps she could re-feature once again. Renee Howland also a solid season for the Thunderbirds. Yeah, it's interesting talking about those Pulse players because Leota also is unsure about her future. Her family reside in the UK because her husband plays rugby there. Um, so it's going to be a tough call, but they, Robin Broughton is one of those coaches that players play for. And if Broughton goes again, I think she will be, I guess, the catalyst as to why Leota and Wilkins go around for one more year. So, but Leota, look, at, in full flight, a magnificent player to watch. Um, so she's been solid. And Hallinan, particularly early on, was certainly one of the standout players in the competition. She was in career best form. Just gone a little bit quiet lately, and obviously the Thunderbirds would like her to lift. But if you look at this season in its entirety, she certainly deserves to be there as well. Joining Jeeva Mentor, I guess, in the defensive end as contenders for the main award, Bianca Chatfield's had a very solid and consistent season with the Melbourne Vixens. Casey Coppel, of course, always features when we discuss most valuable players. And Katrina Grant, too, of the past couple of seasons, she's just always flown under the radar in terms of just how good she is, but she's always the backbone of that Central Pulse outfit. Yeah, and another one we haven't mentioned is Laura Guyatt. She's been pretty solid as well, Dan. But, um, yeah, Chatfield, I guess, is and Grant are the best of that bunch. Coppo a little bit quiet early on and that was consistent with the Magic's form but come good lately and the, the great benefit of Coppo is when it comes to finals she and Debrain really turn it on so certainly a, a key player um, but those players all should be all very proud of the season that they've had so far. So the MVP of course voted by a panel of experts on a 3-2-1 basis both here in Australia and New Zealand so Harbs put your voting hat on who are your top three in both the best new talent area and of course the most valuable player in no particular order. Okay, so best new talent, my top three, Revillian, Fowler and Mez all need to be considered and MVP, oh, look, oh, Brown and Fowler most definitely, the third positions between Mentor and Langman, probably 
mentor just tips out Langman. Good selections there, Harbs. I've gone the exact same way as you as well. Best new talent, Fowler, Mez, Ravillion, perhaps one of those three will take out the title. Obviously, Janelle Fowler, the front runner, most valuable player, of course. Fowler, again, the front liner. Madison Brown, always outstanding. Jeeva Mentor, one of the best in the business. That's all we have time for for this week's episode of Centre Pass Extra. Catherine, thank you once again for all your insights. We'll be back later in the week to preview the preliminary final showdown. Until then, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>